الحمدللہ نحمد تعالی و نستعین و نستغفر و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو محتد ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهر أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهر أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحبة The sins are something all of us must strive to avoid and all of us continually do within our lives and so we're in need of coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I wanted to read one of the narrations of the salaf of this ummah rahimahumullah wa radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ala awalihim as sahaba related to five things that if you do, you will never have to worry about being amongst the sinners again if you practice this. Five things that if you practice it, you will not have to be amongst, you will not be amongst the sinners again. And this scholarly advice from the Salaf of this Ummah, Ayu al habba because it comes some, uh, from some of the books of the Salaf of this Ummah which ha have Kathrata many narrations that because we don't have a lot of scholarship in checking the authenticity of these narrations we cannot derive a ruling from it a hukum when we don't know the authenticity of the narrations and because these narrations also do not go back to the Prophet ﷺ, but they are statements of the Salaf of this Ummah, Rahimahumullah Jami'an. Ayyuh al-Habba, due to that fact, we can derive lessons from them as long as they are in conformity to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul wasallam and the Minhaj or methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah. So in this narration, a man came to Ibrahim ibn Adam rahimahullah ta'ala who was one of the scholars whose words were profound cures of the heart and he said I have repeatedly transgressed against myself by committing a sin give me something that will inhibit me from continuing like this so Ibrahim rahimahullah ta'ala said if you have the capacity to practice five things, you will never have to worry about being amongst the sinners again. The man was athirst for this admonition. So he said, Ibrahim, give me these five things. Ibrahim rahimahullah ta'ala said, Firstly, if you want to disobey Allah, then don't eat anything from the provisions He's facilitated for mankind. The man was amazed at this comment and asked, How can you say this, Ibrahim, while all of the provisions are from Allah? Ibrahim said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Well, if you know this, then how do you have the audacity to eat from his provision while you are disobedient to him? The man said, No, you're right. We shouldn't have. Give me the second one. Ibrahim said, Secondly, <clears throat> if you want to disobey Allah, then don't live on this earth. Don't live on his earth. The man was amazed at this comment, more so than he was at the first comment. So he said, how can you say that, Ibrahim, when all of the earth belongs to Allah? Ibrahim said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, if you know this, then how do you have the audacity to live in his earth while you are disobedient to him? The man said, no, you're right. We shouldn't have. Give me the third one. Ibrahim rahimahullah ta'ala said, thirdly, if you want to disobey Allah, then choose a place to disobey him where he can't see you. 
Then the man said, How can you say this, Ibrahim, when Allah knows the secrets of the heart and what is hidden? He hears the crawling of an ant on a smooth boulder in the depths of the darkness of the night. Ibrahim rahimahullah ta'ala said, Well, if you know this, then how can you have the audacity to disobey him? He said, No, you're right. We shouldn't have. Give me the fourth one. Ibrahim rahimahullah ta'ala said, Fourthly, if the angel of death comes to take your soul, say to him, Wait on taking my soul until a later time. So the man said, How can you say this, Ibrahim, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when their appointed time comes, it will not be delayed, nor will it be hastened before its time. In Surah Al-A'raf. Araf. Ibrahim Rahim Allah Ta'ala said, Well, if you know this, then how can you expect to be successful at the time of your death when you are disobeying Allah? The man said, Yes, you're right. Give me the fifth one. Ibrahim Rahimullah Ta'ala said, Fifthly, when the Zabaniya, meaning the angels who guard the hellfire, come to escort you to the hellfire, then don't go with them. The man couldn't handle the fifth one and started crying while he was saying, Enough, Ibrahim, enough. I seek Allah's forgiveness and I turn to him in repentance. He remained steadfast on obedience to Allah until his demise. This is a fantastic lesson for us if we only can implement this in our lives. Remember that when you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you're doing that act, and before you begin to do that act, because often we have the intention to do an act of disobedience and then we do it. Before you're going to drink that bottle of wine, before you're going to solicit that prostitute, before you're going to look at pornography, before you're going to take that puff of weed, then reflect on this narration, Ayu al habba Before you begin to backbite, or while you're backbiting, stop yourself and reflect. Doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see you? Doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hear you? And if you have a way that you believe that you can escape from Allah, and that Allah won't see you, then do as you please. But Ayu al habba I guarantee you 100% that you can't escape from your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and forgive us of our many sins and bless us to be of those who reflect upon this and reflect on the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said alayhi salatu wa salam that he makes istighfar and uh, toba to Allah more than 100 times a day. So what about us ayyul ahabba? وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم